Welcome to this episode of the Esports Detective Podcast Show. My name is James Williams, and today Bradley Beal says it's time for the Phoenix Suns to win a ring. So after Phoenix's game Friday night against the Sacramento Kings, where Bradley Beal played spectacularly, he had 12 points in the fourth quarter. He played very good defense on De'Aaron Fox in the fourth quarter, including uh, two steals late in the game, which helped propel a Phoenix Suns comeback win over the Sacramento Kings, which is very vital because the NBA this last week or so of the regular season, every game is very much mattered because there's kind of like a cluster of where we, I mean, now with the game left and recording this Saturday evening, we kind of know where just about everyone is, but every game counted. And the fact that Phoenix won that game, they have a much better chance now of potentially getting that six seed where they don't have to go into a play in uh, to get into the playoffs. And after the game, Bradley Beal was incredibly hyped up about Phoenix's win. And he said that uh, Phoenix is ready to win a championship. So we will go ahead, play this clip here from Bradley Beal, and then we will uh, talk about it afterwards. In what type of a zone were you in out there? Playoff zone, man. It's time. It's time. It's time to start playing defense. It's time to execute and take care of the ball offense. It's time, man. We want to win the ring. It's time. It's time. It's time, Amanda. It's time. It's time. It's time. I'm hype. I'm hype as hell. I'm ready to go. All right. So there you have it. Bradley Beal says it's time to win a ring. So I don't blame Bradley Beal for being, you know, optimistic about the Phoenix Suns' uh, chances in the playoffs. It's okay to have confidence. It's okay to, you know, in sport. You need to have confidence in professional sports. So I like the confidence, but... The Phoenix Suns aren't winning a ring this year. I don't think they're even making it out of the first round. If they get into the playoffs, there's still a chance that even if you are in that four-team play-in, that is going to be a tough, tough, tough route to the playoffs. Uh, They do have an advantage where if they are in the play-in, they're probably going to be the seventh seed. So they have that home game against probably, it's either going to be like the Lakers or the Kings, it looks like right now. Um, But the reason that they aren't going to go anywhere in the playoffs is because I just don't like the construction of this roster. You have Bradley Beal, nice player. You have Devin Booker, who I think we all think is like a top 10 player in the world. Kevin Durant, another guy who we think is a top 10 player in the world. But other than that, I understand Grayson Allen has been like a nice, you know, three point shooter this year, shooting 45%. But other than that, and I understand Nurkic at times is like a very quality offensive player, quality big. But other than that, this team is basically just top heavy. If you, I just named like their starting five there. You also have Eric Gordon coming off the bench, Royce O'Neal coming off the bench, and Drew Eubanks. That is your eight man rotation. In the current state of the NBA today, in 2024, you cannot win with top heavy rosters anymore. That is over. The league is, the league is too deep. It is too tough. You need to have depth. And if you don't have depth, you are screwed. Um, and I wanted to talk about the Phoenix Suns here for a second, too, because I'm kind of curious of their future here. Because if you look at this team right now, they are the they're either going to be the sixth seed or the seventh seed in the West. And you have Devin Booker, who is in the prime of his career right now. I think he's like 27, 28. You have Bradley Beal, who is 30, 31, who has if you look through his basketball reference page, has been missing a lot of games the last few years. And he's a smaller guard, which is always kind of concerning, where those guys don't typically age that well. And then you have Kevin Durant, who is still amazing, but, and he's played a lot of games this year, but, you know, basically since his Golden State time, this is his best playing year of his career, and he's 36 going on 37. That is not the best sign for the Phoenix Suns in their future here, because last year in the middle of the season, right after Matt Ishbia bought the team, as you guys know, They make this all-in blockbuster trade for Kevin Durant. They give up basically every pick that they have. I think they gave up like some vital organs too. They give up Mikel Bridges and Cam Johnson. And you kind of look at the team and you're like, hey, you got Chris Paul, Devin Booker. You got Kevin Durant. You lose your wing depth, but you get Kevin Durant. You still have DeAndre Ayton, who if you can get something out of him, he has potential to be awesome. This team can make some noise in the playoffs. And then Kevin Durant only plays eight games in the regular season for the Phoenix Suns. They really don't have much time to mesh together. And then they actually give Denver probably the best series that they had. I think they're the only team that pushed Denver to six. Denver basically swept everyone else or only went five games. 
So you kind of looked at that prospects of like, hey, the Phoenix might have a little bit of a strategy here if they can kind of like mesh this team together of all of their pieces. It, it kind of it, it can work. It can work. But then, and the, if you look at the Bradley Beal trade on paper for what the Phoenix Suns gave up uh, to get Bradley Beal, what they gave up for him, it's actually just value wise, it's not that bad. Here's what's so bad about that trade. You do not have any outs. You do not have any outs. You gave up you gave up all of your assets from Kevin Durant and you gave up your whatever assets you could potentially have left for Bradley Beal. Plus, you if you're trading Kevin Durant ever, he's like 36 now, so his trade value is still pretty low or it's getting lower and lower and lower by the minute. And then Bradley Beal has a no trade clause. So even if like this season, you know, washes out, say Phoenix gets swept or something in the first round. Uh, Cause again, I don't like their prospects. If they're playing one of the top three seeds in the West, I don't like the prospects against Denver, Minnesota, or OKC. I don't think they have enough size for Denver and, uh, and Minnesota. And then if it's a series with OKC, Shea Gilgis Alexander is the best player in that series. So I, I don't like the prospects, especially on the road, being the road team in that series. I don't like the prospects, but if this, you know, if this season's kind of like a failure, you can't just like be like, all right, you know what? We'll get rid of Bradley Beal and we'll kind of put things together and we'll get like two or three players from that $50 million hole in the salary cap that Bradley Beal is now. No, you can't do that. You were stuck with Bradley Beal. You are stuck with him. Um, if you look at the, uh, the salary cap for next season is projected to be 141 million right now with uh, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal, they're at 150 million, 10 million over the cap. If you add in Yusuf Nurkic's contract, they're at 170 million. Filling out the rest of the roster, they're going to be over the first apron and most likely over the second apron too. Definitely way into the luxury tax zone. My point being in bringing that up, that is a very expensive team to be a play-in team or be a first round exit team with all the assets that you gave up too, on top of that stuff. Not even the money that you're putting in, but all the assets you gave up to be able to put the money in. That is a lot of money for a first round exit team. Um, and that's kind of like the main question I'm asking in this video is what is Phoenix's potential after this season? Kevin Durant aging, Bradley Beal aging, Devin Booker still in his prime for the next few years, but you know, how, how far can like, how high of Devin Booker's ceiling is with an aging Kevin Durant and an aging Bradley Beal on a super expensive team where you can't necessarily make trades. You can only really touch stuff around the edges. You're going to have to rely on getting minimum guys. I don't know what their ceiling is. If you're looking at the West next year, Minnesota's going to be back. Denver's going to be back. OKC is probably going to be better. Dallas is going to be better. We don't even think about Memphis who had like the season from hell with the jaw suspension. And then he gets hurt. They were able to find something in Gigi Jackson this year. He's an awesome player. Plus they're going to have like a top six, seven pick. I know this draft sucks, but still you could find a decent role player here. Phoenix is going to be probably a top four seed next year. I just named like what five teams I definitely like more than Phoenix next year. So what is their ceiling? What is their ceiling? I, I don't think their ceiling is that high in this super competitive West with the top heavy roster that they have right now. Cause again, too, you're not trading Devin Booker because he's untouchable. It's going to be pretty hard to trade Kevin Durant. And I don't think you want to like, you know, rattle that cage and even think about trading him to maybe mess up Katie's, you know, uh, you know, demeanor morale and you can't trade Bradley Beal. So you don't have any moves. This is your nucleus. And Kind of the point I'm making about this, and this is kind of where I want to uh, conclude the video here, guys. I didn't think about this even being a possibility, but we know that this is a phenomenon in the NBA where each and every single year we have stars that get upset and they want to leave. I think we've had less of them than normal, like the last year and a half, maybe, but we did have Damian Lillard last summer. And it's always seems like some of these come out of nowhere. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because at what point does Devin Booker look around? This is a guy that, you know, if you look at uh, the 2021 year, they were the number two seed in the West. 
made the NBA Finals, were very in a very, very close six-game series loss to the Bucks, where Giannis had to drop 50 in a closeout game six to st- stay they off. 2022, they won 64 games. That's around what the Boston Celtics are winning in the regular season right now. They lose in the conference semis. That was kind of a weird thing where um, they just kind of completely blew that series. It was a really weird kind of collapse for the Suns there. My point being, Devin Booker knows what it's like to succeed. He knows what it's like to have successful regular seasons. He knows what it's like to get to the NBA Finals. And does he look around at this Phoenix Suns operation right now with this new ownership group and be like, hey, I don't think I can make an NBA Finals here. Is Devin Booker potentially going to be the next unhappy superstar in the NBA? Are we going to see him potentially request a trade to, let's say, the New York Knicks? I like that fit. You could be like, uh, you know, the, the, the thing about the Knicks right now is like we've had the Donovan Mitchell rumors to them, but we know that like Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, we're not sure about that fit because Donovan hasn't necessarily, you know, him and the Darius Garland fit. There's been times where it's been seemed like it was really nice, but this season it's been kind of choppy. Now, is that kind of choppy because Donovan's, you know, on the outs with Cleveland right now? but he's also a smaller guard, but I much more like the Devin Booker fit next to Jalen Brunson because Devin Booker, as you saw when he was next to Chris Paul, knows how to play with another guard, has had a lot of success playing next to another successful ball dominant guard. He's been able to play off the ball a lot more. Doesn't necessarily need the ball in his hands. Could thrive with the ball in his hands, but doesn't need it. The Knicks are kind of on the outs of Julius Randle, it seems like. Could they package Julius Randle some stuff and a bunch of draft picks and get Devin Booker this summer? I think that's something they could do. Now, it'd be interesting to see would Phoenix be willing to, how fast would they be willing, in a hypothetical, this is all hypothetical, guys. Um, in a hypothetical, how fast would they be willing to be like, all right, you know what, we'll just, we'll get rid of Devin Booker. Because you did give up all this stuff for this current team. So I don't think you're going to be so eager and fast to potentially trade Devin Booker to a East team where he'll probably have immediate success. So I kind of just wanted to throw that last thought out there because, you know, being in the play in after you were had success with like a really balanced team previously in your tenure, where you're able to be a one seed when 64 games make it to the NBA finals as a two seed Phoenix hasn't really touched that since then. So it's going to be just interesting to see, what happens with Phoenix at the rest of this year? I don't think they're ready to win a championship like Bradley Beal said. Um, I think they could potentially be scary, but I just I, I don't like their pieces around their stars. And Kevin Durant, he he has the ability, you know, to still be awesome, but he's he can't necessarily take over games like he did when he was in Golden State or even some of the time when he was in Brooklyn. So there you have it, guys. Um I guess let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, if you made it this far in this video, please hit that like button. Please hit subscribe if you want more content like this. We've been uh, doing this show for a few years now. We're just starting to try and get things to grow on YouTube. So um, very much appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching. My voice is about to go out. I'll talk to you next time.